Hi everyone. Today we will talk about how we can save our home from a dog blood bath. Um, so we have four ways to do it, four options. It is it really dramatic because we see all these people suffering from their dog's behavior in the home. Um, fosters, um, dogs who love, people who love dogs and they want to foster dogs to get another dog in the house. People who move from one place to the other and um, it is really hard for them if one of the dogs is behaving bad. By the way, I, if you guys want, you can, you're welcome to share it with your favorite Facebook page because what I'm going to talk today is really important. It can save your dog's life. I'm not kidding. Um, it can save a foster for being returned to the shelter. It will save your dog for hurting someone and eventually you, yourself, by trying to get involved in a dog fight. And um, what we're going to talk today is basically prevention. Prevention to save things and, and avoid things from happening. Let's make an example. You're in a plane and this, the, the goal of that flight would be you jumping off the plane. And you're jumping off the plane <laughs> and on the way down you're looking for your parachute and you're asking your flight attendant like, hey, how do I be safe landing on the floor without being killed? And he's like, sorry. Now you're on there, you should check your parachute before you jump off the plane. You see what I'm coming from? So today my approach is proactively. The, the problem here is that people usually react. They react to a dog's reaction. And then the dog reacts because we react. And then we react because the dog reacts. So what basically is we kind of chase our butt. We have a tail chasing idea here, which I just want to stop. It's just wrong. Um, why jumping off the plane without your parachute? Why asking on your way down, hey guys, how do I save myself? You cannot. You would just go down and hope that you're landing somewhere soft, on a slope, on a snowball, maybe on a bed, maybe it's just a movie. We don't know. Okay? So let's look into four ways to save your home from a bath bath, blood bath, okay? So, first of all, we need to understand that dogs, there's a, there's a misconception. There's a, there is a big way of people saying, well, dogs are pack animals. Dogs are, they need an alpha. So the alpha does the whole thing. And I'm just a caretaker and I have my alpha dog or my alpha female or the alpha male and that's my family so thank God everything works as long as it works and if it's not then we have a disaster stop that it's scientifically proven this is incorrect alpha or alpha male or alpha male female comes from a breeding perspective where the best male and the best female are matched together to have a best offspring. But for some reason, and it's going back to, you know, uh, in the, the 70s, Dr. Mack, who was hired by the Department of Interior to observe wolves in captivity and create kind of a treatment plan to help those animals. And he had kind of limited resources and he had limited space. He had like a fence around and in the middle were a couple of wolves and he was observing them, keeping notes. That's a great job, but there was a problem. There was a problem that these conditions were not real. It wasn't real life situations because what they did is they capture a wolf from here and there, put them in there and observe, and observe them. It's kind of like me being an alien and grabbing five people all over the world, put them in, a, in, a, in an elevator 
okay, with nice elevator music, la 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 la, and then observe them what they do with one kind of food after a month of being in their locked in. See where I'm coming from? So these observations were not correct. There was a misunderstanding how wolves live, and this, you know, Dr. Make at a later point changed his mind and says, guys, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know better. Now that we have all these scientific methods and we can observe with GPS and all this stuff, now I understand that the alpha theory that I created was wrong. I'm sorry. But here's what happened. In the meantime, some people made a lot of money out of it and get books out of it. And the whole industry of dog training got into that point and have us believe that we are part of the pack. I have to be a pack leader, and if I'm not, I have to establish myself as a pack, like the alpha wolf would do. And then you have a bloodbath, and you don't know where it's coming from. It's not your fault. You didn't know, because they lied to you. They come up with an idea that's actually not real. It's, it's a wrong idea. So he, here I want to set up some facts and, and help you not having that disaster in your home. Really, believe me. You don't want to see it. If you haven't had it yet, you don't want to see it. You, go, you don't want to go through this emotional experience of seeing your beloved animals killing each other and you're helpless. Killing each other and you're being helpless. You have nothing in your hands to fix it. Here's the solution. Again, you have time to invite your friends. I'm not talking every day about this stuff. I just have a run today and I just want to share it with you. So share it with your Facebook friends, like the page, share whatever you do, just do it right. Okay? Put some words on it. And if you have questions, I will answer them at the end of that. Kind of short video, but really essential. So back to our track. Dogs are family oriented animals. They are emotional beings. And they are here on earth, not to just multiply and eat and poop. They have here a higher purpose. I want to keep that aside for now. I want to focus more on a home thing. So dogs are family oriented. And if they're coming into your home, for our home, from families that fell apart, from rescue, from adoptions, from a breeder, we create a new family. And these dogs are not family when they come into your home. They have to become family through a certain process. And I'm going to share it with you today. So, if we consider dogs are pack animals, then we have to understand that a pack can only function if there are a certain amount of dogs in there. So, don't go into the idea that dogs cannot live without other dogs, and they cannot live without humans because they are pack animals, okay? They're not. They're individual beings, they have individual emotions, and they think individually. However, they're smart enough to team up in synergetic couples. It's kind of like getting in a relationship for them to function better. Why trying alone if I can help, if I can have help? In other words, the dog will try to create a better environment for himself by going into a emotional relationship with one of he agrees with. There is a free will here and I want you to focus on that. It's very important to understand. So you have a dog who is based his natural laws on a free will base. I have a free will to make my choices and I choose you as my friend because I trust you, because you make sense, because you have proven yourself of being helpful, because you're not being a jerk, because you're not hurting me and because you're not chasing me and because you respect me and because we kind of have a good time together. And that's why I will follow you because I'm the dog, I'm smart, but I can do better with you. Get that picture? In other words, this dog chooses you to go into the relationship because he doesn't have any other choice. Because if you open a door, he have a free will to walk away or stay with you. You want to give it a shot? Open your door and see what happens. Hmm? He's going to stay in your house or he will go away. So how is that relationship built in your home? And if you have multiple dogs, how did they come together? Did they met each other in the park and say, Oh my God, you're such an awesome dog. I know you're not my breed, but I really love you. Let's make friendship. And your other dog says, What? 
Are you really think that I got a friend with you just coming into my yard because this guy brought you in? Park you. You know, I don't like you. I have a free choice to deny your friendship. Back off. Don't, don't touch my bone. I'm going to kill you for that. And you're just there watching it. How about we turn that around? Give you that knowledge to recognize that these things can change just like that. Because there's an option for that. Once you go into this mindset that you are not a victim of an alpha relationship, but you are in a position to become your dog's best friend. Not only that, that your dog may choose you to follow and not his friend and not anybody else and not the guy on the TV and not the guy on the book. Just you. Because you're awesome. Because you know what you're dealing with. And you know how to get complicated things done. And then, all the dogs in your home that consider you as an authority because you can provide their safety. You can provide what they need. You can provide water. You can provide the safety. You can provide housing. You do all this funny stuff for them and you actually love them. Yeah, you can, you can love your dogs a healthy way. And not a, a wrong way or a, an unhealthy way. Now, once you, once you reach to that point that your dogs follow you because you make sense, then have a problem, they will check in with you. Says, hey, I have a problem. And you're like, what's your problem? I cannot open that door. Can you help me for that? And you're like, I really want to help you. But you know what? I want something in exchange. And he's like, sure. What do you want me to do? And you're like, give me something. And your dog is like, I can sit for it. And you're like, awesome, dude. For that, I can open the door. And all of a sudden, you have a conversation going on. You have a talk. Your dog talks to you and you talk back. What do you think your dog's going through his brain when he recognized that you can actually speak dog? Barking is not the language. Trust me. It's an emotional language. It's a language of gestures. But in order to get to these gestures and understand the language, you have to understand the concept. It's kind of like you're going in a foreign country. Let's pick a name. We go to Japan. Okay? I've never been there. I have no clue what they do. But I have friends that have been there and explained to me that if you really like respect somebody, you don't shake his hands. Because it's disrespectful. And you're like, what are you talking about? If I like him, I'm going to shake him because I'm a Mediterranean. I'm going to hug him and give him a kiss on his cheek because he's really an awesome dude. And you're like, are you kidding me? We don't do that. This is unmoral. You don't do that. And you're like, it doesn't make any sense. And then you go in another country and you're kind of like a guy who's really, really like meat eating. And you go to India and you see all these cows running around with all these, uh, you know, makeups. And, and, and you're like, Wow, they're, 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 th these cows are holy, like they don't eat the cows? No, they don't. But we eat them. Are we wrong? Are they wrong? So there are morals and ethics that, com that, that explain to us how we are human function in each other in, on that earth. Well, guess what? Dogs have the same thing. They have family code of conduct. Wow. Okay. Let this, let this word seek into dog's code of conduct. And once you recognize that there is a code in it, and there is a code how rules and responsibilities are set in that family system, all of a sudden you become not the observer, but you're becoming an influencer. Yes. You're becoming an influencer in that family system. And that will be a breakthrough. And now people asking me, how is it possible that you are here and I'm on the other side of the earth, like here, and you can still help me transform my dog's behavior and fix my problem that I have in my family, my dog going after me or going after other dogs? Well, now I'm talking about it. I'm explaining to you why it works, why I don't need to be there and why you don't need to hire Somebody from outsource that speaks that language and helps speaking to your dog. And you're like looking at it and like, wow, this guy is awesome. He's just fixed my dog. And you're still not talking the same language. That's unfair. You should know that language. 
Now we're talking about that right now. So first of all, understand the rights and responsibilities that dogs have. Let's go to the rights. The dog has the right of water, food, shelter, and safety. That's it. He has the right for that. So your job is, since he lives in a confined space, to provide that. So it's your responsibility to provide what the dog's is rightful to have. The dog has the right over his body. It's his body. Like it's my body. Okay? I own my body. It's mine. Nobody can do it without my consent. So you have to recognize that the dog has a free will on being approached or touched to his body. Just because somebody told you that you can maneuver your puppy and lift your puppy and put his cheeks in his mouth so he doesn't bite you or turn him over or pull his legs or bite his ears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to hear that. But it's absolutely wrong. It's not moral and ethical correct to do something to your dog that your dog doesn't want. I know what you're going to think right now. We're going to talk that at the end. So be patient. It's a long story today. I want you to pay attention. If you're not having time for it, it's okay to walk away. We can watch that in replay. So don't worry about it. You don't lose it. I'm going to post it on my YouTube account. And you can watch it from there, wherever you want. Now, the next thing you want to understand is the dog has the right to consent. Or better say, he has the right for informed consent. If he consent to something, he needs to understand what exactly he's consenting for. If you put your dog in a crate because the dog thought there is a food in there, are you correct? Are you basically lying to your dog? And your dog goes in the crate with the expectation to get his reward and he's like, um, dude, um, I don't have a toy. And you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. I need to go now. Bye. And you get out of the door and your dog is freaking out in the crate. Wait. What did just happen? You lied to your dog. In that moment, you lied to your dog. You're creating a trauma to your dog that you are not trustworthy. Voila. And all of a sudden, we have a trauma. How did that happen? Because you didn't understand that your dog has the right to informed consent. I know it's not a human, but dogs are emotional beings. They have a right to know. Why does my dog leave my house and end up in a shelter? Some things we cannot explain. But kind of we can if we have the right approach. We kind of making the dog having free choices so he cannot blame anybody else than himself. And that comes from an angle where you come in as a supporter and a provider of information that is safe for your dog. So, therefore, you are a safe source of information that your dog can rely on to have the result he wants. Wow, you're kind of like a lawyer. Okay? Now, the next thing you want to understand is the dog has the right to refuse. He has the right to say no. But the question is, do you understand that word? Do you understand that gesture that the dog tells you, I don't want that. Do you want that treat? Yeah. Do you want that poop? Yeah. Do you want to meet that dog? Mm-mm. That's a language. That's a conversation. So if your dog says no to you, why do you push it? Why do you take that responsibility on your back? And if something happens with your dog, it will be your fault. Dude, be smart. Back off. If your dog says no, don't do it. I understand. If your dog wants a chocolate, he wants it. That's a different story. Dogs don't eat chocolate. But you have the right, the same right that your dog has, to just say no. But you have to understand how to say it. Being angry about it doesn't change it. It doesn't make it better. But tell your dog, no. Do you want that? Mm -mm. Can I have that chocolate? No. Nope. And your dog was like, oh, okay, whatever. But the language is here. You guys can talk. But you need to learn to talk. We get there. The rights and responsibilities are a very important piece. Because if you want to be the pack leader, if you want to be part of the family... You need to understand the laws and how they're assembled. You cannot be a governor of a country that you don't know the laws. Make sense? You're going to be kind of like, you know what, dude, you have no clue. Back off. We're going we're gonna to vote for another one. 
The next thing, rights have a dog of personal safe space. Wow, personal safe space, like your couch, your bed, your seat, your carpet, your kitchen, your bedroom. See where I'm coming from? But since you have the right to say no as well, and since you have the right of your space and your safe space as well, so you guys have the same rights, you're going to say, you know, dude, it's my safe space. And it's like, what? Why? I can, I can hop on your bed. Well, you know what? Not with my, my permission. You know, it's my safe space and I have the right to say no. Now, I say no to my safe space. But I have to respect that you can say no to your safe space. See where I'm coming from? All of a sudden, your rights to your bed have also responsibilities. And your dog's right has responsibilities. So it's kind of give and take. And now all of a sudden you start creating your family law and you create your own code of conduct of your awesome dog family. So if you watch next time advertising that says dogs are family and he's like, dude, you know what? My family has a code of conduct and everybody respects that. And I'm not getting this junky food in my home because it's not good for my dogs. See, all of a sudden we're getting there. The next step you want to check is that the dogs have rights to protect their owner or what they consider family. They can protect their safe space and they consider to protect their property. And I'm calling those people who work in law enforcement or in animal control or in rescue where you enter the dog safe space, you have to approach a family in their home and there is a dog in there. And you have the right as an officer to get into that home. Guess what? That dog has the right to protect his family. He doesn't care who you are. He doesn't get you about your budgets. He doesn't care if you're a dog lover, dog owner, if you're a military guy, if you're a post office, whatever. He has the right to defend his space. If he feels that you are an intruder and put his family, his property, his safe space in danger. Sorry, that's why we bred dogs. So don't get offended if that dog is growling at you. I know, I'm not an officer. I have no clue what you guys are going through. Really, I don't want to be in your shoes if that shit happens. Oops, sorry. If that poop happens, if you have to do something in a home and you have to invade that home for a legal reason. But keep in mind, that dog there, it's not his fault. He has the right to walk away. You have the right to scare him because you have a right to go into this home and he has the right to protect it. But you have the right to force it and he has the right to walk away. And all of a sudden right now, you're coming from a legal perspective based on the law and the code of conduct. Dude, I'm going to go into that space. You have the right to walk away. I will not harm you in person unless you harm me. And then as an officer, of course, you can shoot that dog if he attacks you in person. If he really does, and he doesn't just bluff it. He's not pretending. It's because he wants not to get involved. He does not want to get in trouble. He does not want to get in a dispute. But he's forced because that's his job. He signed up for it. For a moment he chose to be in that home, he automatically signed that contract. He cannot get out of it. That's what dogs do. The same way you signed up the contract to work for the forces. The way I signed up to work with a client. If once I signed up, I'm in it. I'm going down with it. Okay, that aside, I do respect law officers and I do understand the job. I understand that they do not have enough information to make sometimes decisions they don't want to. I get that. And I know these other people take advantage of it and have these dogs doing that particular job so you don't get in there. I respect that. I understand that. I'm not going into that though, however. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the dog has a free right to move freely in his territory. Crate is a territory. Your living room is a territory. Your yard is a territory. The street is a territory that your dog's considered as a safe area for him to walk. Now, if you want to approach a crate and your dog feels that the way you approach the crate is a problem and you establish yourself as a safe source, 
he has no problem you approaching the crate. Now, then the dog has a responsibility to protect the family from predators. The predator could be even one of your dogs. We get there. Be patient. I have to, I have to give you that bill of rights before we go into troubleshooting. I need to explain to you how the parachute works and what the leashes are and where the pull you have to pull and how to wear it before I throw you out of the plane. Okay, so sorry for that long one. It has to be, it has to be said. So your dog has the right to protect the family from predators. Whatever he considers predator, you cannot punish him for seeing in a BMW, in a car, in, in, a, in a behavior of another dog, a predator. Because I've seen it with my own eyes, a dog react to a car that has a shape that looks like a predator. And I was like, did he just growl at that car? It just parked in a corner and he growls at the car. And I was like, I went down to his level and just watched at the car. It's like, did my eyes like that kind of look blue? And it's like, wow, it, it looks like a predator. Wow. His eyes, his open mouth with his teeth. Yeah. If I would be kind of like a kind of like not 100% good with my blurry vision, I would definitely say if I didn't know anything about cars, that looks like a predator to me. He can move on his own. Wow. And then we're wondering why dogs are attacking cars that are approaching with predator behavior when we're walking on the street. And why do my dog attack my other dog when this car is coming? Because what happens is that dog is freaking out and instead of helping my one, one dog, is barking at that dog and is like, dude, why are you parking that car? We don't park at cars. And it's like, you have no idea. There's a predator coming. And it's like, shut up. And all of a sudden you have a fight. Red directive aggression. <laughs> poop. Real poop. It's not red directive aggression. This dog tries to control the other dog for misbehaving, for not being in the code of conduct. We don't attack cars because mom doesn't like it. So shut up and be quiet. So red directive aggression is what it looks like. But actually it's not. It's a lawful action of that dog attacking the other dog because somebody... <clears throat> Didn't explain that dog what's going on here. Okay, we get there. Now, the dogs are responsible to find food and water on their own. It's not your responsibility to tell them, hey, doggy, are you thirsty? You need some water? No, it's his own choice to go and get five food and water. But now, because they don't have free access to rivers and they don't have free access to rabbits, the bunnies and birds, you have to offer them. So they have to have the feeling, so they're emotionally satisfied, that is being provided for. And who is that? You are that. You are the guy who provides them. Guess what? They just freaking love you because you just take care of everything. You don't tell them, open your mouth, drink some water. No, you, it's there. Fresh water, fresh food, healthy stuff. The dogs are responsible to stay with the family and support with their own abilities in the best manner possible. That's a tricky one. I know it sounds blah, 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 but let's look deeper into that. Your dog has the responsibility to do as best as I can, as best as your dog can, to offer his services for his family. All his good traits that he has in it, he has and he's forced because he's following the conduct like every other dog does to provide it. Now let's see a picture. You adopt a dog who comes from rescue. You have no clue about the story. And the dog on his own free will, whatever, was removed from the family, was dumped in the shelter. And the dog has no clue because nobody explained to him what happened. He lost his job. Dog thinks, wow, I really screwed up that one because I didn't do what I supposed to do. Now I lost my job. I lost my family. You know what? I will make it better next time. Whoa. Watch that. Now, the dog was protective in that family. He was reactive to a person. And all of a sudden, he got fired from the job, thinking that he wasn't protective enough. And you get that dog into your home, thinking that this dog is fine. All of a sudden, he shows the same signs of job because the dog tries to fix it. Okay? He tries not to go to the same problem. 
again and losing again his job. So he's trying harder to do his best job possible. And you don't see it coming and all of a sudden your kid's friend's coming over and you have a bloodbath. And you're like, whoa, where is this coming from? Because you weren't proactive. Now, we talked about the theoretical stuff and we talked about the right and responsibility of your dogs. We talked about your responsibilities and your dog's responsibilities in your relationship. So let's set up some family rules, ethics and morals. You can only do it to your dog what you would do to anybody else that you call loved ones. You cannot be mad at your dog. You cannot hit your dog. You cannot hurt your dog because you wouldn't do that to your family members either. That's the rule. You have other tools for that. We get there. You have to understand that following general rules will help you prevent a disaster. Step number one. Remember, step number one, this is the first one of the fourth, after my store blah blah thing. Speak the same language as your dog. Learn it. If your dog is the one who doesn't speak the language, teach him the language. Some dogs that are earlier removed from the litter have no clue what the language looks like because nobody told them the language. Because as he pooped out of his mom's belly, he went up in the, in the cage, back into the breeder's cage, into the puppy milk cage. And there is no information. The dog has no clue what you're talking about. He has no clue what dogs are talking about. Now that dog is being exposed to your family and he's like, try to find out what's happening here. It's kind of like being deaf or blind. You don't see what's coming up. You don't hear what they're talking about. You have no understanding what it is. The first thing you do is you get super stressed. You get vulnerable, stressed, and you don't know what to do. You try everything and everything is like, no, 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 leave it. And you're like, just, just give me something to hold on. The next thing, teaching a dog comes through play. Dogs play with each other. This is the first way they learn the language. Come play with me. Do you still want to play with me? You know, I'm done. I'm overwhelmed. I'm in discomfort. Don't touch me. Don't come close to me. I'm going to bite your face off. Simple languages. They do play all the time. They talk about it. So if your dog goes into a growling, a barking, a teeth showing, a jumping on, all these gestures and actions that happens is because your dog is trying to talk, to communicate, and the other dog responds to that. So he learns, what happens if I say the F word? Nothing. Yeah, I guess it's not worth it. What if I bark? Oh, that does something. What about if I show my teeth? And everybody's like, <gasps> wow, that was cool. So if I show my teeth, everybody's like, <gasps> hmm. How about I try that with my friend? Oh, that worked. I do show my teeth, he backed off. Hmm. Let's see if I can do that with a toy. Oh, wow, that worked too. How about with a bone? Oh, with my food? Oh, my God, that's just such a cool word. I just use it everywhere. <laughs> and now how about I add some words to that? Like, <laughs> and all of a sudden you see all these this freaking words freaking work. I can bark. I can growl and the life change around me. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to use that. And all of a sudden, I recognize that if I use that to the wrong person, I'm in big trouble. You know what? I'm not using that to that person. I keep my mouth shut and I just don't do it. But I can do it with the other ones. <laughs> I can do it with those who, who don't look like that. And you know what? I will be quiet. I will not growl at him and I will not bite at him. I will just freaking bite the face off whenever I can. Because last time I did it, I got hurt. He put the e-collar on me and he pushed the button because I tried to talk, whatever. Uh, the next thing, you get, you get my point here, right? Now, empathy, sympathy and manners. How would you like if you come home and you say, 
That was a shitty day today. You have no idea what happened in my work. Are you listening to me? Like seriously, I just explained to you how miserable I was today. You know what? You're just a jerk. Forget about it. I'm going to do my own stuff. I'm going to go on Facebook and do a video. Now all of a sudden you see that sympathy and empathy are very important pieces. Your dog had an experience in his home. While you were at work, you have no idea what happened. I'm, I'm talking to you. That freaking squirrel was jumping all over the tree. You have no idea how many invasions we had today. And I was here barking my face off on that freaking screen. I'm telling you, the screws were like just all over the place. But I, I was protecting my home. And what do I get in return? You just walk away from me like, hello. Okay? Now, how about you come into your home and you're like, you're such a good dog. I really appreciate you. really love you. Okay, I'm done. And you do your job. And you're like, that was it? Just like kisses, nuggles, and like no reward, no expectations. Like, hey, dude, say thank you or something. I was waiting for you walking my tail like 20 minutes before you arrived because I just knew that you're coming because I'm an empath. I know when you're coming up. I know when you're leaving your work because I can hear your brain talking. Oh, I'm going finally home. and I'm done with the job today. And I'm like, oh my God, he's coming home. He's so good. I'm going to walk my tail. Oops. I peed myself. Uh Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. And here you go. You open the door and you see that mess in the house. And you start screaming at your dog because he peed in the house. Responsible consequences. Responsibilities and their consequences. So, dogs have intentions. And the intentions of doing something have consequences. I have my intentions to make more money. Okay, so I'm still selling guns to dealers and some drugs because, you know, I have a good intention, I want to feed my kids. And you're like, whoa, dude, you know, these are wrong intentions. Like, why? I have hungry kids. I want to feed them. So, therefore, I can, I can sell guns and, and drugs so I can make money out of it. What's wrong with that? And you're like, this is not moral. You're killing other people for that. And you're like, oh, I didn't know that because I never killed anyone. I'm just selling stuff. So, what? If your dog doesn't have a clue what his actions cause, how can you recognize that he's wrong? He needs a real feedback. He needs an appropriate consequence for his actions. He needs to understand that he has actions and there are consequences. So if the dog jumps on you and you don't like it, what do you do? You're going to punish him? You're going to hurt him? Kicking his butt? Like spraying with a spray bottle or push the e-collar button? Like seriously, that's your reply on your dogs love you unconditionally and he wants to jump on your face and lick your face off? How about you are a clear consequence of his actions? And like, dude, remember, we're talking, we talking dog here, right? I don't like your attitude. I will not touch you. I have the right for my body and my personal space. So whenever you back off, thank you. Thank you. I love your approach. I love that you respected my, my space and you backed off. When you recognize that what you do makes me feel uncomfortable because I taught you to do that. Because I taught you, when you approach my hand and the hand doesn't want it to be approached, it will twist and you back away from it. Okay, that's supposed to be a dog with his mouth, like good dog, like, <laughs> okay? So teach the exercise, you have a treat in your hand, and just twist your hand a little bit when your dog wants to take it. The moment you twist your hand, the dog will back off. Guess why? Because your hand speaks dog. Because your hand said, no, I don't want that. I don't want to be approached. And you look up, oh, okay. Well, okay, so we have dogs who don't get that language and start pushing further. Just want to paw it, bite it, or, you know, take it by force. These are moral and ethical wrong. They have to be taught and not punished how to behave appropriately. Okay? If you need help with that, I can help you with that. We can go through the process. I told you I can do that. And believe me, it really works. It just takes us maybe four weeks, five weeks, and then we're done. Your dog is good, healthy, minor dog. Now, the next thing we want to look for is to be honest. Because honestly, 
I really don't care if you like my video or not. I would just do it anyway. Yeah, because I just do what I want. Even if I'm wrong or right, you know, I'm just doing what I do. Send a clear message to your dog that you're honest about your things. Do you want a treat? Good. What do you do for it? Thank you. I appreciate it. And I give you a reward for it. You know what? I'm freaking scared. Let's walk away from here. No, I better lie for it. You know, I'm freaking scared. Sit, 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 bad boy. Like, why lying to your dog that you kind of have control over it while well, basically you're pooping your pants because you have no clue how this story will end? It's okay to not be the best in what you do. But your dog needs to be clear that your intentions, your actions, and what you talk about it are honest. Your dog will understand that you cannot fix everything because he cannot either. But somebody has to. Even wrong, it has to be done. Or we back off. So if your dog reacts to something that you don't like, but you cannot solve the problem, be honest about it. Hey, dude, you know what? We're going to screw that up. Let's back off. Let's go on the other side of the street. So what? It's okay to be honest with your dog because your dog is honest with you. He tells you exactly how he feels. He will wag his tail a certain way to tell you, I like that. He will wag a certain way like a, you know what, I, I want to make contact, but I have no clue how these things end. So, you know what, maybe I should not approach it. So, dogs have 40, at least, that I recognize, 40 different visual signals. I'm not going to the non-visuals, I'm just the visual signals that they express to their partners or to the other dogs or to the predators, trying to explain in sentences, not just words, how they feel about the situation they're in. A classical example, your dog licks his nose. I cannot do that. My tongue is kind of short and my nose is too high kind of thing. But imagine you have a black nose and then you have a red tongue coming up. Black nose, red tongue. Black nose, red tongue. Long nose, long nose, long nose, short, 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 long, long, long. Uh, does it ring a bell? Like Morse code? Yeah, absolutely. Dogs morse kind of the situation they're in to the predator next door, to the guy who's approaching. Hey, I need more time. I do not compute what's going to happen here next. And you as his caretaker can see that because the dog is like staying focusing and start licking his nose, try to get more information because that in front of him doesn't make any freaking sense. And then, because he trusts you, he will do one thing. What the part is going on here? And you're like, dude, I got that. And he's like, oh, thank God, because I don't know what's going to happen next. And he's like, I got that. I got that. I know we're scared. You know what? How will we back off? Because that guy over here is just weird. weird. I can see in his eyes. He has no clue what's going to happen next. So let's back off here. And you and your dog just make a U-turn and walk away. Why? A, because your dog is trusting you. B, you always make sense. And D, you never failed because you always have a freaking solution and things are impossible. So try to be honest with your dog. Try to understand that dogs have moral intelligence. They have emotional intelligence. They're not stupid. I mean, I know in the late 60s, all, the, all these philosophical studies had like people telling them that dogs are black boxes and whatever you put in there, you get out. Come on, guys. We didn't have an MRI back then. They had no clue how the brain is functioning and what effects to have each emotion that the dog is experiencing. Okay? And then, the most important thing of all of those four steps that I just explained to you, which I'm, I'm going to repeat it again, speak the same language. Be empathetic, sympathetic, and have proper manners. Be responsible and give consequences in a right way and be honest dogs do that with each other and now ta -ta -ta -tam, the big thing if dogs interact with each other they're speaking the same language they're empathetic sympathetic and have manners with each other if you see there is something going on here your job as a family member as a chosen one 
to intervene, inter intervene, I got that, intervene in their interactions and let them know, dude, you're off the rules here. Now, when you go back in your bed and chill the bark out because your behavior is unacceptable, and don't let your dog fix that. It's not their job to manage each other. It's your job. You are the business owner, <clears throat> the dog business owner, the, well, the family master, whatever you call it. The dog needs to know that you're watching them. And if you're watching them, it's not of their job to fix the disputes because dogs don't want to have big disputes. But some dogs that you choose to bring in your family have no skills and they have to learn them. So if you bring a dog in your home, the first thing you do Solution to the problems of a bloodbath, teach the dog the same language. Teach them more ethical skills that you have in your family. Show them empathy, sympathy, and manners because that's how your family functions. If you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. <sighs> Whatever. If you hurt me, I will let you know that you hurt me. And if you have consequences, if you continue hurting me the way you do. If you don't get the message that freezing is a clear message like what are you doing on my butt? Are you going to smell my butt? You know, I didn't give you permission for that. But you know, okay, I'm going to get the message. I get the memo. You want to smell me. But you know what? We're done here because you don't respect my space. You see where I'm coming from? Your dog needs to manner that. He needs to understand. He needs to understand that he has responsibilities and consequences. And he has to be honest. He cannot lie to you. It's unacceptable that he lies to you. If he feels wrong, he should tell you that. If he feels scared, he should tell you that. That's his responsibility. He has to talk about it. He doesn't know how to talk about it because somebody else pushed the button and told him to shut up, told him that he's not allowed to be emotional, is not allowed to express his problem, is not allowed to growl, bark, or any way, in any way express his fears, I'm really sorry about that. And I'm really sorry about your dog that had happened to him. He's a traumatized dog. He has been abused for that. And you're going to have to fix that. That's a tricky one. And I'm here to help you. So if one of these cases applies to you and you have a problem with speaking the same language with your dog or... You are super awesome on that, but your dog has no clue about it, and you don't know why it's happening. I can help you with that too. So don't hesitate. I put my message down here: www.romanscanandtraining.com/contact. So you can message me. Like Roman, I have that problem. I have no clue how to fix it. I tried it. I'm an experienced dog trainer. I've dealt with this before, but that particular dog is just a mess. I have tools in my toolbox. It will blow your mind. I have toolbox to share with you. So everybody else is blown his mind seeing you working on it. So I'm not, I'm not hiding anything. I'm always open. I'm honest to you. And I do the same thing I do with my dogs. I'm honest. I'm responsible. I take the consequence of my actions. I'm empathetic with your problems. I have sympathy with your worries. And I have manners, kind of. But I'm speaking the same language. I speak the language of your dog and I speak the language of yours. Okay, I'm not good in grammar. I make mistakes on my emails, but you know what I mean, okay? And once you explain to, you, to me how your family works and how your ethics and morals functions, I don't really care where you live. If you live in India, in Greece, in Turkey, in Africa, in US, in Mexico, in Canada, in, in Australia, I don't mind. I understand the cultures. I'm multicultural. I've been more many places, almost. I've never been in India or China. But I understand the cultural problems that we have with animals, that we have to wrap our mind around some things. So it's not wrong. Just give me a buzz. Send me a message. We'll find a way to help you. Thank you very much for watching. I know it was a long one. My head is kind of going to explode right now. I had to share it with you because I'm sick and tired seeing all these people having blood baths in their home for really only four reasons that easily can be fixed in less than five weeks. So if you liked what you saw, please visit my website, check it out. Like my YouTube account, I'll share that video, uh, the link on my thread. 
leave a review if that what you heard made sense and you could apply it and it helped your family, help your dogs feel better in your own home, help your relationship with your dog, share it with me, share it with others. Thank you. I appreciate you. Bye.